bunny. Yes. This next this next section of the podcast is the part that I was writing. I was in the middle of writing it when unfortunate events occurred. Mm -hmm. So what I had planned was here are some really quick news smatterings because people know the big stories in the news: Stormy Daniels, Donald Trump, MTV's Dan Cortez and all of those elephants. Okay. But people may miss the smaller stories in the news stories that if I was still gainfully employed would definitely have been much, much funnier. Yes. First off, but understandable. Yeah. First off, let's talk about douchebags. Okay. And no one is more of a douchebag right now than YouTube car wreck Logan Paul. Who the fuck is that? Oh my God. I'm so happy that you don't know this because this is going to be a, a fun ride. So he's a YouTube personality. He does YouTube videos. So he recently uh, had took a vacation to Japan. He puts out a video like every day, okay. as most of these YouTubers did he, do. Did he uh, do the suicide garden? Yes, that was him. Okay. That was him, the suicide forest. He goes to, to Mount Fuji. He visits the suicide forest. He sees a dead body just hanging there. And he decides like, oh, that's a, that's a dead body hanging there. For real, that's a dead body. That's a dead body. Oh, my God, I'm freaking out. Oh, man, maybe we shouldn't be here. Get a close-up. Yeah. Get a close-up of the corpse. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Okay, now pan to me. Oh, I'm shocked. It's like, it's, like, it's like that part right before the Americans are killed in Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy with what we did. I mean, oh, my goodness, I can't believe these savages did this. <laughs> So he's widely shamed. He says he's sorry. YouTube is like, uh, YouTube puts him in, in a YouTube money-making penalty box. Yeah. And then he, he gets out and he gets back to doing these videos. It, to be fair, it, 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 it must be so difficult to be a YouTube celebrity. And uh, I'm going to try and be one soon. So it, 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 Lord knows this is going to be an uphill battle. Yes. But this is what people want me to do. So I'm going to give it an, a Woodian try, an Ed Wood type try. But um, these people do videos every day. So I imagine eventually you're out of ideas and you're just kind of going with whatever madness overtakes you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to to um give an excuse to logan paul because the guy's a douchebag so anyway he's well, like okay. hey he he may be a douchebag because many of the people who do shows like this are certainly douchebags but i didn't think he was such a douchebag over this i mean what the fuck do you okay. do with you go to you go to the suicide gardens you yeah. know yeah but but uh there's more to the story okay so he gets out of the youtube penalty box and he's like hmm America hates me. The world hates me. How can I win back the hearts of America? I know. I'll post a video on YouTube where I'm just tasing dead rats. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that noise you made was beautiful. Oh, man. <laughs> I want that to be my, uh, my, uh, my text notification. <laughs> Like every time I get a text, it's just you reacting to Logan Paul tasing dead rats. So tasing. I'm just at the store and then suddenly, ha ah, ha. Oh, I got a text. So it's official, Bunny. Uh huh. I don't understand young people. No. YouTubers tasing dead rats, Gucci Gang, Tide Pod, Snapchat. Nope, it's official. I'm an old man. Isn't it weird how that happens? I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened. It just happened overnight. I don't understand. And and like no. like our references, you know? Like yeah. like we may, we make some some reference. It's funny to us, but they don't know like I I was talking to my counselor, okay? And I had mentioned the yeah. podcast and yeah. I was describing I was like, "Well, you know, so basically I'm kind of like the Ed McMahon because that's always been the case. That's the dynamic that's set up early. Um, Sorry. Huh? 
I said sorry. No, that's just how it is. But but okay. but then then I stopped and I was like, you don't know who that is, do you? Ah. And she I was, was having a conversation. She was no. I was like, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I was having a conversation with Ed McMahon recently with Natasha. Uh, it's just that. I really like the state of late night television. I was so bored with anything that wasn't David Letterman back in the in the dark times of the giant chin. Yeah. That was hosting the freaking Tonight Show. I'm so happy to have lived to have seen him leave television. But um, Johnny Carson had Ed McMahon. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anyone hosting a late night show that has anyone that even comes close. No. Not, not even a little. Yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, 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 Stephen Colbert doesn't have anyone. He has John Baptiste and stay human, but he doesn't, he doesn't use him enough. Yeah. And then, uh, 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 uh Jimmy Fallon has, uh, that guy who writes for SNL, but I, I don't even remember Higgins. That's his name. Higgins. Okay. But he doesn't use him enough. He's no Ed McMahon. I don't think Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel has a uh, Mexican guy who's not in on the joke. Jimmy, right. Jimmy Kimmel has Guillermo. Yeah. But yeah. it's just none of these people are Ed McMahon. No. Ed McMahon hosted his own variety show and it was amazing. I can't imagine he, Guillermo can't host his own variety show. No. It's just sad. I Good so. friends with Dick Clark. Let's yeah. not forget. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Maxwell. How are you doing? Good. You look tired. Are you tired? Yes. Okay. Well, um, we're going to be taking a break soon, and then I, I can put you to bed. And then after that, I can get to the part I've been dreading of the podcast. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Yeah, you're clapping. Okay. So let's talk about Utah. Okay. Specifically, the town of Hilldale, Utah, which Ooh. apparently is an actual place and just not the bad crime ridden crime ridden neighborhood of Back to the Future. Yes. Um, last November, the town elected its first female mayor. All right. Her name is Donia Jessup. Not only is she the first female mayor, but she is the first first mayor of Hilldale, Utah, who is not a member of the fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. <clears throat> so you can already tell that everyone in this small town in Utah are super psyched, right? Totally. So this is what happened. Um, Christians love non-Christians. Yeah. A mass Exodus okay. of white males quit their government jobs in town. Eleven city employees resigned recently. One literally cited religious objections to working for a woman. Oh, you're fucking kidding. Yeah. Can you believe that? Hilldale, Utah. Donia Jessup, the new mayor. And just uh, uh, white men are just leaving in droves, basically because they can't work under a woman. Thanks, Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. That's that's so, that's that's unbelievable. Yeah, I said Mike Pence. Why hey. are you clapping at? Wait, hold on, buddy. Wait, Maxwell, son of mine, why are you clapping for the name Mike Pence? This is amazing. Do you know who Mike Pence is? I don't. I I really don't know, but I just think he's amazing. Okay. All right. All right. Google thinks Mike Pence is amazing. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I really liked Mike Pence when he was he was younger and he hung out with his talking dog Goliath. Yes. Back then, people called him Davy. That was his nickname. <laughs> but when Mike Pence would hang out with his talking dog Goliath, I really liked. I really liked Mike Pence then. Yeah. Yeah. He would always say this. Gee, Davey, do you think it was God? Not only is that a Davy and Goliath reference, 
that's also a reference from a specific episode of Mystery Science Theater. It was a it, it was a referenceception. Yes. It was amazing. Let's stay on religion. Gloria Copeland. Okay. Wife of uh, Ken, Ken Copeland. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, the megachurch pastor and televangelist, which is a s- phrase that I didn't think I would still be saying in 2018. No. When it was 1987 and uh, televangelists were uh, getting arrested, I really didn't think that in 2018 I'd still be talking about televangelists. <laughs> So televangelist Kenneth Copeland, uh, his wife, Gloria Copeland, posted a video on the church's Facebook page urging people not to get the flu shot. She said that there's no. uh, Good. Good. Yeah. She said that there is no such thing as flu season because, and I quote, Jesus himself gave us the flu shot. Now, look, you can believe in Jesus Christ and the frickin flu. Yeah. But here's here's what I really want to get at. I don't think this is wrong. OK, I don't think this is going too far. Is it wrong of me to want to see how much it would cost to get a, a, a massive uh, gaggle of flu sufferers to go and sneeze on her? <laughs> I'm not saying I would do it. I just want to know how much it would cost. And I don't think that's that bad. Uh, how far is she from you? I have no idea. Where is Kenneth Uh, Copeland? I believe, no, I believe Kenneth Copeland is, uh, is, is in Texas. So not that, not that far. Seriously, put your shoes in your room, Maxwell. We've been, we've been in, we've done this dance before. I just want to know how much it would cost. For example, there was always a book. Uh, well, was- well, now I want to know what it would cost and if we could start a Kickstarter. Ooh, that's a good idea. Now, this isn't news, but I just wanted to cover it. Allegedly, 150 people are killed each year by falling coconuts. Okay. Falling coconuts kill 150 people every year as opposed to five people who die a year from sharks <laughs> yes coconuts so, are more deadly than sharks yeah so my question is <laughs> what coconut coconut week what would that look like coconut week what would Coconut Week look like? The only thing I can think of is that maybe, just like uh, recent Shark Weeks, maybe we could get Michael Phelps to race a coconut. That would be good. Yeah. I, I would re- I, I would really enjoy watching somebody race coconuts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so anyway, that's why I got a flu shot today. <laughs> I okay. forgot. Going back. They said, do you want a flu shot? You don't have to get a flu shot, but this is a pretty bad flu shot season. Should I get it? And I was going to say no, but then I'm like, no, Gloria Copeland doesn't want me to. Yeah. Go ahead and give me the flu shot, ma'am. Well, I I got a flu shot, too. But for me, getting a flu shot is is more like um, getting snacks at Sam's Club. (laughs) Yeah. You know? You're just walking by and you're like, okay, what do you got? Yeah, I'll take one. What the hell? You know, so it's it's like, it's like, is this cost, is this flu shot costing me anything? No, the insurance, the Medicare has got it. Like, fuck it. Go ahead. What else you got? I don't need it, but I'm here. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So, uh, so finally, here's some shocking news, buddy. Shocking news. Shocking news that you're not going to believe. A number of big name retail stores, a number of them, yeah. apparently had a bad holiday season. Hmm. So they're firing employees left and right. Huh. JC Penney's is firing roughly 600 people. Yeah. 
And uh, my daughter, Amber, who is amazing, she's been working at JCPenney's for the longest time. And a lot of times I'll pick her up from work and I'll drive her home. And uh, we used to have so much in common. Yeah. And we would just be talking and she'd be like, oh, I had such a horrible day. And I'm like, well, how was what what made your day horrible? Well, you ever have someone who who finds something in the clearance aisle and they think that it's on super sale when it's not? It's just that some other customer left in the clearance section. And I'm like, oh, my God, testify. <laughs> So we really, we really connected over our uh, the pains of our job. So she, it, it, Amber sees sort of the writing in the wall. So now Amber is getting a new job at the same ice cream slash hamburger place that is all over the Midwest that Emerald works at. Uh huh. So that's but good. Not they the t- same one. Is it the same one? No, no, I'm pretty sure it's the same freaking one. Emerald and Amber are going to work, be working at the same place. Uh, so basically, it's going to be a sitcom. Yes, I'm already, I'm already, I'm already working on on getting a, a writers' room together to 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 work on the scripts. I, I just heard, I just heard, heard the theme to the Odd Couple in my head. Oh, hold on. Thanks, well. Walmart is firing thousands of employees and they're closing Sam's clubs left and right. Thankfully our Sam's clubs are still together because if Sam's club wasn't around, I don't know what we would do. And uh, gee, I think that's it. No other big chain of retail stores are firing people. Definitely not any store that I'll mention the name of specifically on this podcast. Well, that is it for the written parts of the show maxwell seriously you just kicked my arm i got two shots today i went to the doctor and i got two shots i got one shot here and i got one shot here and uh my arms hurt like crazy so just if you could try and not kick your dad in the arm is that okay jean-claude van maxwell that's your new name jean-claude van maxwell okay no no Good. I'm so glad you finally know what your middle name is because it was really touch and go there for a while. <laughs> yeah, your middle name is Edward. Your your name was originally going to be Edward. You were going to be Edward Galindo. But Absolutely. we had to change it because we realized that we had a daughter named Bella and we had a daughter, we would have a son named Edward. And we couldn't have a Bella and Edward in the same household because of a book that you will never read that was written for teenage girls about sparkly vampires. Yes. It's, it's, it's a long story. 